Hey everybody, and welcome back to Erlengrot. It is late summer, and I have been thinking, what am I going to do with those two fields that I just took the weed off of? And, well, I have decided uh, I'm going to put canola in those fields. So, with the um, Upper Austria Geo that we're running... Canola is an interesting crop. Uh, you plant it in late summer and autumn and harvest it the following late summer and autumn. So basically the crop has a one year growth cycle. I thought, hey, let's, uh, let's see how it works. I know some AI farmers on the map here have planted canola. So I thought I'd give it a try myself. So it rained all day yesterday. And uh, I took that opportunity to uh, put some slurry down on the field. Put some manure down on the field when I ran out of slurry. And uh, then I came through and put some lime down on the fields. So they have optimal pH. And uh, we've got pretty high nitrogen values at this point so I'm gonna put down some canola and uh, see how it all works out for us I don't really know I don't remember what canola takes and uh, I'm not really gonna bother looking it up but uh, yeah that's what we're gonna do just gonna kind of wing it so you can see we got perfect pH 6.0 nitrogen values 120 100 and 140 you know they're kind of all over the place uh, 160 180 and then we get down here 200 kilograms um, perfect pH values across all of the soil types Oh, I didn't want to do that. Hold on. There we go. Wife got me the side panel for Christmas, and I'm trying to figure out how to use it. I gotta label all these buttons. They all do stuff, but I don't have really have a clue what any of them do without just pounding buttons. What I want to do is we're going to make a pass down the field, down field five. And if you remember, field five and six, for that in fact, have all three soil types. We've got sandy loam, loamy sand, and loam. And we'll see what the optimal... <laughs> nitrogen levels are and uh, well where we are with respect to nitrogen on the field we need to do any sort of top off of nitrogen after the fact then uh, we might just go ahead and get that done also post seeding here so we need 200 nitrogen in um, loam or 
one. 200 nitrogen in loam, so we need to bump that up. We need 180 nitrogen in sandy loam. We need to bump that up a little bit, and we need 140 nitrogen in loamy sand. go over here a little bit because I did put some slurry down and then I went and put some manure down here 120 On 200, there should be a 200 on loam too. Yep, so field six is pretty much where it needs to be. Field five is going to need to be a little bit topped off. So yeah, I've got the side panel. I'm trying to figure it out. I've got, you know, I've got some. I've got camera controls on a joystick. What you think will make for some smoother panning around. Uh, I did customize it and I put the zoom in and out on a rotate of the, uh, of the stick. And of course, if I toggle that mode, I can uh, get into the... Uh, wheel loader controls I tell you I think I'm just I think I'm just a trackball guy for the wheel loader tried using this and having to toggle between camera and wheel loader is a little bit convoluted personally and maybe it's just 5,000 hours on farm sim you kind of old dog new tricks type of a thing but we'll see Get GPS lined up here and lock it in. Once we get a pass on this done, I want to jump out and just make sure that we're pretty much good to go with respect to nitrogen levels on six. Over nitrogenated here on loamy sand. Sandy loam are over. We only need to be a 180, but in loam we should be perfect. Move into loam, yeah, we're perfect on that. Just a little over nitrogenated. And then what else we got going on today? Well, we are going to uh, 
we get good dry conditions, we're going to be harvesting our wheat over there. Kind of got everything all staged up, ready to rock and roll. Just waiting on dry weather. Because we got good weather for the rest of today. And then, of course, rain tomorrow morning. Rain tomorrow afternoon. Two days of sun. So we're at late, late summer 9. Summer 10. Late summer 7. Yeah, late summer 7, 8, 9 on Friday. That's the first day of autumn. We haven't done a time lapse recently, so let's go ahead and break on into that. Well, it's 20 to 1, and I'm not really sure if ground is going to dry out today. I mean, gosh, I hope it does. But uh, if it doesn't, well, it doesn't. But at any rate, I just checked the ground moisture, and we are at 26%. So I don't really see it drying out between now and uh, 1 o'clock. That means at the earliest, the, uh, the ground will be ready to harvest at 2 o'clock because what Seasons does is it checks ground moisture levels levels at the top of every hour and uh, basically if it's not dry enough by 1 well, then it won't be dry enough until at the earliest 2 so we'll just have to wait and see uh, I'll bring it back in once we are ready to harvest some wheat Well, it wasn't quite 1 o'clock, it wasn't quite 2 o'clock, it was 3 o'clock before we finally got our crop moisture down to where we needed to be. So we are out here in our wheat field, and let's see here, let's see. I haven't even looked yet what our crop yield might be, so let's take a look. Oh, we're in the green! That is good, good, good. I mean, after, after that grass fiasco, I was really uncertain where we might land uh, with this. Starting to drop off a little bit, but I think we transition to a different soil type. Right there, yep. So we went from loam to sandy loam, 
to loamy sand right there. And uh, let's see here where we are with our yield as a result of that. We went from 115, 110 yield down to 95 yield down to 80 yield. If you remember from my how-to video, Sandy Loam, the best I can do is 80%. That's the best possible yield I can do in Loamy Sand is 80%. So getting a yield of 70% isn't all that bad. And loam, or silty clay, the best I can do is 90%. And we're at 85%, so that's pretty darn good there, too. See, the nitrogen levels are definitely dropping with this harvest. pH levels are definitely dropping with this harvest. It's good to see. And yield is doing darn good. I'm rather happy with the yield, actually. So we're going to let our hired helper work and talk a little bit about the hired helper enhancements with precision farming. Uh, early on, I really didn't know what those enhancements were, but what I think they are is mostly, you see now the hired helper is using 100% of its working width without the precision farming building being down. The hired helper would have an overlap, and therefore for a portion of the cutter bar, it would be out in the already harvested ground. So it would only be using maybe 90% of its cutting width per pass. So obviously if you're using 100% of your cutting width per pass, well, you're on a field that has, you need 10 passes on, uh, you've saved one whole pass as a result of not having that overlap. And that there, folks, is where I think uh, they're coming up with the whole improving um, worker efficiencies and saving fuel. Using less seed and fertilizer is that overlap. Just for the sake of saving time, I'm going to hire a helper and let him or her. I'm not really sure who's in there now. Like we've got a guy in there now. Oops. We're going to let him harvest the field. And uh, we're going to run the green cart. Now, I've already transferred 20,000 liters of grain, of wheat, over to our pig food machine, which is over at the grain mill. So it is topped off 30,000 liters. And it's just waiting for our corn. Once we get 30,000 liters of corn, we'll move it over into the pig food machine. It can get fired up and start making us some pig food. We still have a fair bit of pig food in our silo. But as we saw, we get further into autumn, into winter. These pigs are going to start fattening up quite nicely. They're going to start eating a whole lot of food. We're going to need a lot of food saved up in order to keep them fed. 
I've also put down a second bale stack for straw. We were able to squeeze it in beside the first bale stack that we had. We've got room for about 30 bales of straw in the current stack. And I expect that we are going to go over that. in the bales we get off of this field right here. You see that right here. Got our second bale stack put down. And we basically need to figure out which baler we're going to get to replace the coon because I don't I don't like the coon at all. Not the coon the not the coon. I don't like the um crone baler at all. Not one bit. Might get the claws. So it requires 145 horsepower little bit much i don't know i might look in the mod hub see if i can't find something in the mod hub real fast uh categories failures where did it where is it where is it Where is it? Failing technology. Man, you know, you really wish. Seriously, I really wish that uh, these categories were alphabetized in the Giants mod hub. Sure would make things a lot easier for me. Let's see here, Baylor's. Ah, uh, well, there's a crone from the arm team. No, I don't want to try that one. Looking, 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 looking. Looking, 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 looking. Not a lot of Valors out there. Uh, there's a round, a coon round Valor that looks interesting. Yeah, so we'll look. We'll look, see what we might come up with as far as a round Valor goes. But uh, yeah, it's going to be more of the same. Bringing wheat off of this field. And uh, trying to get it bailed up before the rain. Because once again, we got rain coming in here tomorrow morning. Tomorrow afternoon, we got two good days of sunshine. One of those days is uh, early autumn. And, well, hopefully, either our corn or our sunflowers will be ready to harvest in early autumn. And we can focus on that crop in that good day of weather or maybe maybe we will uh, make some more hay in late summer early autumn to uh, basically fill up our haystacks and make a little money selling hay on the side 
Either way, I'll see you guys later. And until next time, happy farming. Be sure to like, subscribe, and click that notification bell.